Hello, what's up, YouTube? Photographer Ronnie Sweet and Atwan. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the perfect Gaussian blur radius for your images every single time you're using frequency separation. So, if I told you had issues with finding the right amount of Gaussian blur to apply to your images, then if I told you also had issues retaining the original skin details or skin texture every single time you retouch your images in Photoshop using frequency separation, this is a tutorial for you. And before you proceed, I have a simple request that you hit the like button because when you hit the like button on this video, it helps the video perform better and YouTube suggests it to more people out there. So make it a point that you hit the like button and if at all you're not yet subscribed, I have a request to make it a point that you subscribe to this channel. So for this tutorial, I'm not going to be going in depth with frequency separation because I have a number of tutorials that explain everything in details. I'm going to be using my actions and if I tell you don't have my retouching essentials pack, you can simply support the channel by clicking on the link in the description of this video so that you can support and buy my retouching essentials pack. That is going to help you fasten or quicken your retouching process within Photoshop. So right now this is the image that we have and you can see it is a 16-bit image so after buying my retouching essentials pack simply unzip the package and after unzipping it in order to load the actions into photoshop you can simply come to window right here and you come to actions and when you do that it's going to open up the action window right here or the action panel and in order to load them into photoshop simply come right here to these lines and left click and come to load actions and simply click and you can locate your actions wherever they are so i'm just going to undo that so i'm going to play the 16-bit action and usually if i told your action was saved the right way it stops at a point when you're going to apply your gaussian blur radius so i'm just going to select my 16-bit action you can see i have 16 right here meaning i have to play my 16-bit action for this image so it stops at the point when you have to apply your gaussian blur radius and for this case i'm going to take this down and explain for you the perfect amount of gaussian blur so usually you have to make sure the preview window is checked right here and you also have your radius all the way down so i'm just going to zoom you can either zoom in or zoom out so you have to use this preview window to hover around and look for are the right skin texture so you have to look for an area that has more or prominent skin textures than the rest of the image so for this case i feel like this area has more skin textures than the rest of uh, the skin in this case so this is going to be a reference point so this doesn't matter if at all you use the lasso tool for frequency separation or if at all you use the mixer brush tool or if at all you combine both the lasso tool and mixer brush tool so this is the most important step for frequency separation so if at all you mess up on this it means that you won't be able to retain the original skin details in your photos or in your images after retouching so for this case after getting that reference point we have to start blurring out uh, the details or the textures from this very area remember the radius I'm going to use or the radius I may use for this image may be different from the one you may be applying because your images may be having less textures or even the camera used may be different. So someone may have used a lower megapixel camera and mine may have been slightly higher. So the radius is going to be differing from one image to another. So you shouldn't cram the radius. So I'm just going to come to the radius right here and simply left click and start dragging it up. So left click and drag just like that. But you have to drag while looking at the textures. And we are going to stop at a point when the textures are just starting to get lost from the image. So I'm just going to start or continue taking this up just like that up to when the textures are just starting to get lost. So at around 7, that is when the textures are just starting to get lost. And if at all, you click right here and you hover around, you can see on the overall image, all the textures have been 
loss you can see as soon as you click here it shows you in real time the area that you want to look at in this window so you can see the textures have just started getting lost so usually you have to stop at that point when the textures are just starting to disappear completely from the image don't take it overboard and don't or make sure that you can no longer see the textures so if at all you do this right it means at the end of the retouching process the textures that we lose out on this point are the ones that we are going to be remaining with in the retouched or final image so i know it is a little bit confusing but the textures you lose out here are going to be the ones that you're going to be retaining in your final image and after that just come and press ok and the action is going to continue running so let's just give it a moment and it is done doing that so i'm just going to come and delete this uh, because i prefer not to use it anymore so for this case after the action has finished running you simply have to come and select your low, your low frequency layer and usually what i tend to do i first of all if at all you use the mesa brush to just come and turn off the high frequency layer and you right click under the brushes you get your mixer brush tool and you have to set it the best way so just come right here make sure the hardness at zero percent and make sure it is a clean brush right here and make sure clean the brush after each and every stroke has been checked or selected the weight i prefer to use is nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 in the flow of 100 percent make sure sample all layers is not checked so we're just going to start brushing and we see if at all you're going to retain the original textures within this image so i'm just going to come and simply left click and start painting just like that so basically i'm trying to paint with uh, the texture layer turned off and i've selected the low frequency layer so i'm just going to come and paint just like that so come to the highlight or bright areas and i'm just going to mix those areas so you have to mix the colors that look similar or the same so that you can blend the transitions and have a harmony between those colors and while they are transitioning from one area you can see we have highlights and midtones right here just mix that area so that you can have a better transition between for example the highlights and the midtones so let's now focus or put the focus on the forehead area right here that we have just worked on and we're going to come and turn on the texture or high frequency layer and we switch on and off the overall frequency separation group so that is the before and after before after just look at how the textures have been able uh, to be retained in this case so i'm just going to show you this so this is the before and after before after so that is how to apply the right amount of gaussian blur for your images and if at all you found this video helpful don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not yet subscribed this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating